do you do when you need something? If you're thirsty, you take a drink. When you're bored, maybe you pick up a good book. If you're cold, you grab a sweater. <laughs> Lonely, you hang out with a friend. And if you're hungry, you pick up your favorite snack. It's really easy to do something about your own needs because you can't escape them. <laughs> they follow you around like a shadow. It's a lot more difficult to pay attention to what other people need. You have to focus your eyes and your heart. And when you begin to see the needs around you, then you can take action. Maybe you see your mom is stressed after a long day of work. So load the dishwasher, even if it's not your turn. Spot a new kid in the cafeteria? Offer a seat at your table. You see your little brother really struggling with math? Take a few minutes out of your game to help him. The lady who drives your bus seems really sad. Thank her for being on time to pick you up every day. The weeds in your neighbor's flower bed get out of control while she's on a trip. So pull some weeds for her. <laughs> when you begin to focus your eyes and your heart to see the needs around you and do something about them, others will see God at work in you. That's why compassion is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. like maybe different from someone else's. You may live in this kind of neighborhood. A lawn to mow, swing set in the backyard, lemonade stand in the driveway. <sighs> or maybe your neighborhood is more like this. Everything you need is within walking distance from your home. Or some neighborhoods could be like, hello out there! Boo, boo. But every 
every neighborhood has one thing in common, neighbors. They've all got people. And whenever there are people around, that's when you need to know about compassion. Compassion is caring enough to do something about someone else's need. Because the people on your block have all kinds of needs. When they get sick, they need a doctor. If they want to learn how to add and subtract, they need a teacher. If they lose a cat up a tree, they need someone with a really big ladder. These three have made it their purpose on earth to care about people in their neighborhoods. In today's story, we're going to hear about Jesus' purpose on earth, and maybe ours too. I'm not really sure what I want my purpose to be. I just hope I get my own action figure. Yee! I'll see you in a bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 4, verses 14 through 30. Even though Jesus was on this earth for 33 years, there's still not much we know about his first 30 years. We do know that he visited Jerusalem for the Passover feast with his parents. He learned carpentry skills from his father, Joseph. And when he was about 30, he went down to the Jordan River and asked his cousin, John, to baptize him in the water. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. As Jesus rose from the water, God's voice called out from heaven, This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. It was an incredible way for Jesus to begin his ministry. After 40 days in the wilderness alone with God, Jesus returned to Galilee, filled with the Spirit of God. Anytime he visited a new town, he went to the place of worship, the synagogue, to teach the people. You are the light of the world. Isn't he just the bee's knees? Everywhere Jesus went, people were amazed and praised his teaching. That is, until he got to Nazareth, the town where he had grown up. Well, if it isn't Carpenter Boy Jesus. Hey man, where you been? We hear you talk real big now. On the Sabbath day, Jesus went into the synagogue. An attendant handed him a rolled papyrus. The scroll of Isaiah. Isaiah was a prophet who lived hundreds of years before Jesus, and God had spoken to Isaiah about a Messiah who had come to rescue God's people, and Isaiah had written down every word. Watch that papyrus as you unroll it, a bit crackly. Jesus stood before the crowd of worshipers and unrolled the scroll until he came to the right place. The Spirit of the Lord is on me. He has anointed me to announce the good news to poor people. He has sent me to announce freedom for prisoners. He has sent me so that the blind will see again. He wants me to set free those who are treated badly. And he has sent me to announce the year when he will set his people free. There was silence as Jesus rolled up the scroll and sat back down. Everyone stared. Today, this passage of scripture is coming true as you listen. Jesus hadn't just read some dry, dusty, ancient words. Jesus had declared that he was God's Messiah, that he was there to announce good news and bring freedom to the poor, the hurting, and those who had been mistreated. Well, he's Joseph's son, isn't he? He can't be the Messiah. What I'm about to tell you is true. A prophet is not accepted in his hometown. Words are easy. He calls himself a prophet? I studied with him on those benches right over there. Thinks he's something special because he can read a scroll. All around the synagogue, people rose to their feet, glaring. They turned on Jesus. You are not welcome here anymore. That's right. We don't need you making things up. The people were so angry, they forced Jesus out of the synagogue. He allowed them to herd him straight through the village, all the way to a cliff on the edge of town. Get rid of him! Throw him down! But Jesus simply turned and looked at the people, sorrow in his eyes. The men and women that he'd known and loved growing up, 
wouldn't accept who he was. The crowd couldn't face Jesus. In their anger, they had missed the whole point that Jesus had come to make things right for those who were hurting and overlooked. Jesus walked right through the crowd, away from the cliff edge. They parted to let him go through. Then he left Nazareth and went on to Capernaum where he continued to carry out his mission. When Jesus was here, he had a mission to announce the good news to people who needed to hear it and to care about people who'd been treated badly or had been overlooked. He came to heal, to teach, and to rescue. That was his purpose. And Jesus fulfilled that purpose when he died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. That's how much compassion he has. That's how much he cares for us. So if we're going to follow Jesus, that doesn't mean we literally have to walk where Jesus walked, but it does mean that we should have a similar purpose. We should care about others. Your purpose might be to heal. When someone isn't feeling well, maybe you can do something to help them feel better. Or when someone is having a hard time understanding something, you can help teach them. Or you can rescue someone from danger. You can be a hero. And guess what? You don't have to be a doctor or a teacher or a firefighter to care about others. You can care about the people on your block right now. You know how? You can lend a hand to someone who needs one. You can make somebody laugh. <laughs> or you can listen. Or you can just be there for someone who's all alone. Jesus cared so much for other people, and we should too. That's why the one thing to remember today is this. Following Jesus means caring about others. That's true in your neighborhood and in mine. <gasps> I've got my own action figure. Spitting image. Eh, close enough. I'll see you next time. Can you play me? Okay, thanks. <laughs>